Before we start doing any sort of probability, we need to start learning about permutations and combinations. This video covers permutations mostly through examples. So here's how permutations work with the product rule. If you have an object that can be selected in n minus one ways, so let's say you have some sort of meat and there's three different types, and then you have some sort of cheese where there's five different types. So if meat can be selected in three ways, and the second object can be selected in n minus two ways, so this would be cheese, the number of possible pairs you're gonna have is n1 times n2, in which case we would have 15 total pairs of different meats and cheeses that we could serve. So when you have a couple different objects, they each can be done in different number of ways, you just multiply them together. And we can think of this sort of like a tree diagram. So imagine the first thing you do is choose a meat. So there's going to be three options here. You choose either meat one, meat two, or meat three. Now for each one of the meat choices you make, there's going to be five options for cheese. So this will branch out like this. You're either going to have C1, C2, C3, C4, or C5. You're going to get the same choices for the second meet, C1, C2, C3, C4, C5. And then you're going to get the same number of choices for the third meet, C1, C2, C3, C4, C5. If we count up how many endpoints we have, we're going to end up with 15 points. And this is exactly what this product rule is telling us. Now, this is just two different objects, but you can imagine that if we were to have more objects, we just end up getting more branches. So if we have n1 ways, n2 ways, n3 ways, all the way up to nk different ways, the product of these is just going to be n1 times n2 times n3 all the way up to nk different ways. So it's best to just show these through examples. So two problems. Imagine that you're trying to make a website name, so a domain name, and you can only use two different letters. How many different websites can you make with just two letters? Well, we have to think about how many letters there are. So we need two letters. There's going to be 26 ways to choose the first letter. 26 ways to choose the second letter. So what we're going to get is 26 squared different websites that we can make. What if we were to have three letters? Well, it'd be the same thing. There's 26 ways to choose the first letter, 26 ways to choose the second, 26 ways to choose the third. So we're going to get 26 to the three different ways. And this, of course, allows repeats. Now, what is the probability, so we can think about probabilities now, that a randomly selected website of three letters contains an A as the first letter? So what we have to think about here is the probability, so A blank blank, so this is our event here, we get A blank blank, and out of all the possible ones that we have, we could get blank blank blank. And we know exactly how many choices we have for each of these. So in order to find the probability, we look for is the probability of the event divided by the probability of the sample space, in which case all possible objects here. So what we're going to do is we're going to get 26 squared different ways, because the event is basically like saying 1 times 26 times 26, divided by all possible ways, which is like 26 times 26 times 26. And this would simplify into 1 over 26. So that would be the probability that you randomly select a website that contains A as the first letter. So uh, with this being said, that was one problem. We don't have any sort of uh, no repeat rules here, but I'll show you that in a second problem. So in the second problem, we're going to create anagrams of words. So this means that we're rearranging the letters in words. So how many different anagrams of the word culting can be made? Now the thing about anagrams is that an 
anagram allows no repeats. You get seven letters, you have to use those seven letters. So when we think about the seven letters that we have, we can ask ourselves how many we can choose from for each one. So in our first letter, we have seven different choices. We can pick C, A, L, T, I, N, or G. Now, whichever one we pick is not going to be available for the second option. So we're only going to have six choices for a second option. So like, let's say we pick A here, then we're only going to have C, L, T, I, N, G available for the second one. Uh, what if we pick N for the second one? Well, now we're only going to be left with C, L, T, I, G as our third letter, which gives us five options. And this continues all the way down until we use up all of our letters. So this is going to be seven times six times five times four times three times two times one, which is just equivalent to seven factorial. So what you're seeing here is equivalent to this factorial notation. You take the number, you go down by one, by one, by one, and you keep multiplying those out until you get down to times one. So here's a different question. How many different four letter strings can you make from the word culting, allowing repeats? So we need to make a four letter string here, one, two, three, four, and we can have repeats. So we ask ourselves, how many letters do we have to choose from for the first? Well, we have seven. Now, what about the second one? Well, we can have repeats, so we also have seven choices. Third one, seven choices. We allow repeats. Fourth one, same thing. So what we get is there's seven to the four different ways of doing this. Now let's contrast this by making four-letter strings of culting without allowing repeats. We're going to see some cool factorial notation here. So we'll do it the same way as before. So first we have seven choices, but we can't have repeats. So for the second letter, we only have six choices. We're removing an option. We're gonna have five choices and four choices. So this is seven times six times five times four. Now I wanna show you something to turn this into factorial notation. I'm gonna multiply each of these by one. And the way I'm gonna do this is by being creative. So I'm going to multiply the top by 3 times 2 times 1, and then I'm going to multiply the bottom by 3 times 2 times 1. So really what I've done here is I've just multiplied it by 1. Now, if we take a look at this, we have that the top is 7 factorial, and we're dividing by 3 factorial. And that's giving us the number of solutions to this problem where we don't have repeats. Now, what I asked for was how many different four-letter strings. So we can think of this factorial at the top as being the total, and what we're dividing by is seven minus four factorial, where this is going to be the number of letters. So in these sorts of problems, we can actually use a nice little formula here. We are going n factorial over n minus k factorial, where k is the number of objects you're choosing. So I know in a lot of probability books and courses that show you the formula first and then show you how to apply it, but I figure taking a different approach of actually showing a real example and then sort of working the formula backwards, maybe that gives you more intuition for how this works. So this is just permutations, the next video is combinations, and then we'll put them all together to answer some much more complex questions about probability.